we wander down the trail of time, we have changed the world around us. With our accelerated advances in technology, we have many great marvels to be proud of. We have growing communities, commerce that thrives, places to grow food, places to work and play, with interconnecting roadways to help us move from one place to another efficiently. Our intellect and inventions have evolved exponentially, but have we left the natural world behind? If most of us, even today's young adults, think back to our youth, we recall images of a much different place. In many cases, the tranquil meadows, woodlands, and creeks of our childhood have been replaced, and with it, gone as much of the wildlife that once called them home. Think about all the times when you, or someone you know, have said about a particular species. We used to see them here all the time when I was a kid, but I haven't seen them around here for years. The North American wood turtle is one such case. They are a species that ignited my imagination as a young child and stuck with me throughout my adulthood. I remember finding these, and other species, in places that no longer resemble the memories trapped inside of my head. As an adult, I've sought to return to the spots where I fell in love with the natural world, to perhaps recapture that spark of curiosity and wonderment. With great sadness and helpless frustration, I've repeatedly arrived only to find an altered landscape without the seemingly ancient trees, clean water, and certainly without most of the wildlife I remembered. The riverbanks were now visually fractured like garbage. The air was now filled with the sound of passing cars on the nearby roadway. An overabundance of sediment chokes the waters that were once able to display a rainbow of river stones that my friends and I would seek out and skip across the surface. I often wonder when it all happened. The wood turtle is a species that can potentially live long enough that if it survives, can experience such a decline, even if it took 40 years to occur. I can't help but wonder, at what point did the last wood turtle decide that its once suitable habitat was no longer fit, or just simply make that instinctual journey to find a mate or lay its eggs in an upland location, only to end its several decades on Earth? under the tires of an automobile. Time had come to take a journey and explore new places that reminded me of those from my youth where abundant wildlife could still live the way it always had. This required me to drive further, away from the cities and suburban landscape, and head towards the remote areas that still remain somewhat untouched. After a lot of research and some scouting, I was finally successful. I found a few of these magical places where wood turtles could still be found in healthy numbers. Within their range of the northeast to north central U.S. and a portion of southern Canada, these places are becoming increasingly rare. Wood turtles are charismatic creatures. They are said to be one of the most intelligent turtle species. They are known to be good climbers. They have been observed stomping on the ground to simulate rain, causing earthworms to surface so they can prey upon them. They are also semi-aquatic, utilizing clean, freshwater creeks in tandem with upland forest habitat and often open meadow areas with lots of sunlight. Throughout its active season, it is as much at home resting underwater on a pebble-lined riverbed surrounded by minnows as it is trudging through the leaf litter of a deciduous forest. Loss of this habitat is the greatest risk and the wood turtle is not alone. The eastern box turtle, while still common in many areas, is on the decline due to shrinking forests and death on roadways. The Blanding's turtle, 
a larger turtle with a hinged bottom shell, almost like a box turtle, and the beautifully marked spotted turtle, both found in shallow marshes and other wetlands, again, are at great risk from disappearing habitat and road mortality. The bog turtle is a small and powerful example of one already placed on the endangered species list as threatened. These tiny turtles, if found, are most likely in agricultural areas. With encroaching vegetation and alteration of the landscape, their bog and fen wetland habitats are becoming just as rare and endangered as they are. The collection for the pet trade remains a major threat to the future of all of these native turtles. The unifying theme is that they've been taken both by knowing and unknowing pet collectors to spend a life behind glass, many times lacking the basic elements of their natural habitat. Turtles take many years to reach sexual maturity and are slow to replenish their populations. Even one turtle being removed from a population could ultimately cause it to crash, never to recover. Most states made it illegal to take a wood turtle or these other species from the wild, but still it continues. We must learn to appreciate wildlife in the wild, where it belongs. The larger and more pressing contributor is the lack of healthy, connected habitat that meets all of the needs of their complex life cycle. They need a clean and healthy place to live with deep waters to mate and hibernate in. They need abundant food sources such as earthworms, berries, and mushrooms. They need open, dry areas with frequent sunshine to lay their eggs. They need to be able to move from one area to another without crossing a deadly roadway. Such places are disappearing, but the amazing thing about life is that it will continue to try to find a way to survive. If only we can help where we can, or get out of the way if we were the continuing cause of the decline. If a wood turtle does survive long enough to reach sexual maturity, is able to find a mate, and finds the habitat necessary to protect and incubate those eggs, their legacy may live on for yet another generation. Unlike many other animal species, turtles leave their eggs to hatch on their own. The unborn turtles are all alone in the sometimes chaotic wilderness. As the cool spring warms into the blazing heat of summer, Wildlife moves about the forests and waterways, most without knowing about the fragile life just below the surface. The babies remain hidden, still growing from within their eggs underground hanging on as the heavy thunderstorms move in and the rushing waters rise up towards their seemingly safe upland nest locations. With a bit of luck, and hopefully from the instinct of their mother to choose the suitable nesting site, they survive the turbulence of nature. One of their biggest natural threats at this stage is predation by mammal species like the raccoon, who unlike the wood turtle, continues to increase in numbers. The same goes for the red fox, an opportunistic hunter who would gladly dine on a banquet of turtle eggs. As adults, they have far fewer natural predators thanks to their protective shell, but may lose an occasional limb or portion of their tail since they can't completely pull inside of their shells like some other species. As summer fades away, wildlife begins its preparation for winter, and it is around this time that hatchling wood turtles await the opportunity to make their entrance into the world. They will spend their early years mostly in seclusion, the majority of the time hiding in vegetation and feeding as much as they can so they can grow to a size where they'll be less likely to be eaten by a predator. With every nest that survives, there is hope. Unlike many of the early icons of the Endangered Species Act that were threatened by pesticides, the building of dams, or overhunting, many more species are disappearing 
without much dedicated research and little or no protection. In numerous cases, this is because habitat loss and fragmentation causes a slower and often inconsistent decline that allows a number of healthy populations to remain, at least for a time. Those protected or isolated locations allows us to assume a sense of stability that in reality does not provide the ingredients for long-term species survival. We cannot change the past, but we can pave a new road into the future. If we protect species such as the wood turtle while there is still time, rather than once it is too late, as has been the case with so many, we can ensure a bright future for both ourselves and the natural world around us. If we invest in our native species, we may be able to reverse some of the damage we have caused. If we fund and dedicate research so that we can better understand the causes of the decline and the needs of a species like the wood turtle, we will know how we can save them. These are critical times where the right amount of positive energy in the right direction can help us gain the knowledge and take the actions that we can together use to help species like the wood turtle no longer be adrift without a home in our fragmented world. <laughs>